Welcome to Where Clay Meets Yarn. This is episode six on Friday, October 29th. Hi everyone, this is Charan Sachar from Creative with Clay. And I'm Nancy Torrance from Shotsarelli Yarns. So how is it going, Nancy? It's going good. Just knitting a sock, knitting tiny baby sock. Oh, that's tiny. It's not for babies, it's just a toe. <laughs> because last night, I finished Whoa. the sock. That is neat. I love how wild this is. Did it's I a good sock. show you my finished sock last time? Uh, I don't think you had finished it on um, last time we recorded because we skipped a week. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of very lost as to what all projects are finished and what I showed. I probably should have watched a previous episode to know <laughs> what I need to share. Might be good. But I, I really don't know whether I showed this, but my crazy sock is also done. It's uh, a sock. So the ends need to be woven in and my second sock, I'm a little further along than you. But. Yeah. Uh, it's looking so yeah. good. It is. It is. Uh, it's looking good. Uh, and have you had the second sock syndrome? I know you don't because you do knit. I, have two feet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't because I have two feet. Yeah. I don't um, know why people go like, oh, I can, I can never knit the second sock. And I'm like, oh, you have two feet. Why can't you knit another sock? I used to have really bad second sock syndrome. I really mm. did. Um, I would knit one and then like that felt like enough of the project for me. I didn't like the idea of having to stop and start and have to do exactly the same thing again. I'm not a huge, re or at the time I was not a huge pattern repeat knitter. Like I wouldn't mm -hmm. knit the same hat again and yeah. that kind of thing. Um, but I, and I tried for a while to do two at a time socks to try to beat that, mm -hmm. but that felt a little bit like wrangling an octopus and I was not a fan. No. So how I was able to combat second sock syndrome, and I recommend this to anyone who has second sock syndrome, is as the day that you finish one sock. Uh -huh. immediately cast on your second sock. Yeah. Don't do what I did this time, which is um, get two rows into it and then set it down. If whenever I finish, I knit my toe up. Whenever I finish the cuff, I usually will not finish the cuff and bind off unless I have enough time to knit the entire toe of the second Next sock. Yeah. Or if you're going top down, don't bind off the toe until you're ready to knit an entire cuff because that's like the same day yeah the same day because that gets you like t for me it's about 20 rows in you have something substantial on the needles you've started yeah. the project next time you pick it up you don't have to do anything particularly fiddly for mm -hmm. increasing or decreasing or whatever and you can just pick it up and go um that's a good strategy because for me it's more like when I knit the first sock, you know, even though if it's a yarn I've already used before, you know, you have your formulas which you create for your particular sock and you can just follow that and be fine. Mm -hmm. But still there's always something fiddly if I attach a pattern or something to it or a texture to it, you still kind of want to be 100% sure. Mm -hmm. So for me, that first sock is that, you know, little bit of, okay, let me make sure if it's going to fit me. And once I have all those numbers down for me the second sock goes so fast because it's just like now i don't need to think at all i just need to do exactly what i did for the first one yeah uh it's like you know but i like your strategy of you know starting the next one on that same day so that there is no backup period like going like oh i still need to cast on <laughs> so. yeah i finished that project right yeah. i i fin i i bound off i'm done yeah. No, you still have to start your second one. That said, okay. I am all for people who have mismatched socks. The yard guy is here. <laughs> 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 so 
So if it gets noisy, it gets noisy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That explains the humming that I was hearing. He, oh, currently he's in the neighbor's yard. Okay. <laughs> it's going to get louder. <laughs> awesome. We can't win with humming today. Oh. He, was, he usually comes on Thursdays, but it was raining so crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. Last night, David and I went over to a friend's house for a um, board game night. <laughs> and we have to park on the street when we go there because there isn't much guest parking in his apartment complex. <laughs> and we get out, or we're done for the night. We're walking out to the car. And it looks like I parked the car in the middle of a damn lake. The, oh, the, yeah. We were at the low point of the street, which I didn't know when I parked it there, obviously. And it had just rained like crazy while we were playing games. We were there for about five hours. And the water level of the puddle came up to the bottom of the car. Okay. And we couldn't, like we couldn't walk around the car. Like I couldn't get in the driver's side wow. from the sidewalk because I had to go through like this much water to get over there. So I ended up going back up the sidewalk quite a ways, still had to jump over a puddle, got my foot all wet anyway, get up to the driver's side of the car. And there was still at least this much water on the ground on the driver's side oh, wow. when I had to like reach to climb into the car. It was awful. I got to drive home with a very wet foot. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was, it just rained nonstop. And uh, what I realized was that our gutters needed cleaning because the water from the gutters in front of the garage was just dribbling through, which was making all the water come in the garage. Oh no. And though there is nothing, you know, everything is on shelves and nothing damage worthy on the ground. I'm very careful about that. Like not even my boxes or anything sits on the ground. Yeah. Even my clay in the boxes sits on pallets. So that way I was fine, but still there's water there. So yeah. I still uh, don't want that. Yeah. And uh, because things were going crazy. Uh, like I told you, month of October, microwave went off. And then last week, my dryer went off. Yeah. Um, I'm like, okay, this just calls for trouble. <laughs> I don't want the freezer, which is next to the garage door to go off, no. or my kilns, which are in the garage to go off, because somebody on Facebook posted that things come in threes. I said, <laughs> shut up right there. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you've only got a couple of days to get through October. You'll be fine. Everything will be great. <sighs> so Did you finish any project? I finished multiple projects. Would you believe it? I um, finished multiple projects too. Wow. See, this is what happens when we skip a week. Yeah. So we finish all the things. So we actually do something. <laughs> We do things instead of just talking about things. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. Um, the little projects that I did start to finish, and I did them both in one sitting per Cup Cozy, was I made, let's see if I can bring it oh, up. Oh, yes. I made pumpkin. Autumn Doodle Cup Cozies. I clearly still need to weave in the ends. <laughs> But I made this pumpkin one, which I'm currently using. Are those tiny bats on top? They kind of, um, like they kind of look like it. They're, it's sort of a flower motif, but I like yeah. the idea of them being bats. But this is my bats one, because I did make bats. Oh, yeah. That's clearly bats. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And I did these on um, the nine-inch circulars that I uh -oh. use. I, ha I had to get new circs for it, size four and five. Um, but I have never liked small circumference color work because carrying the yarn mm -hmm. over a join for either double pointed needles or magic loop, which is what I normally would use. Um, 
I always have major, major tension problems and it drives me nuts. So I don't do it. And she recommended using the Chow Gu shorties mm -hmm. in her pattern. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I should see about this. Yeah. So yeah, I, um, start to finish took me a couple hours for each of them. I have at least one more that I want to do. So mm -hmm. we can look for that coming up. And this is hashtag not my yarn. I um, used, what did I use? I got it from Stilly. Is it Barocco? No, I don't Barocco Vintage DK. I don't yeah. Because yeah. um, nice I didn't have the right colors in stock when I wanted to make them. And I was having a day and I wanted to make them right now. So yeah. I went and I got yarn and I made them right now. <laughs> exactly. Talking about nine inch circulars, I, uh, after listening to your story and some other people on Zoom calls, praising nine inch circulars like, you know, they were God sent or something. <laughs> I have tried them before and I didn't like them, but I was like, I, but I, th I think I was at a yarn store or something and I was like, okay, let me try them. And I was like, yeah, nah forget it yeah um so i ordered them and um i was working on these socks which have two rows of plain stock in it i was like you know the purling and stuff might be a little hard let's just do a plain stock in it sock but i didn't want to start a new sock yeah. because then you know too many socks in progress uh so uh, which i might i might still start one but i did do two rows with this and i did mm -hmm. the same thing i put it in its package and I kept it aside and I'm like, no, not for me. <laughs> so my my fingers cramped up in like two rounds. Mm -hmm. It was just like, yeah, I, and my fingers were hurting and, and my fingers were generally hurting that day. Uh, mm. So it wasn't totally the needle's fault, but it was like, it just got very worse very quickly after just doing two rounds. And yeah. I was like, maybe I need to just do it some other time. And uh, today is not the day. So they are kept aside and I'll try them a little later. Do it on a good hand day. Yeah. Yeah. The nine inch cirques I did, the ones that I use now, it took me three attempts, three separate attempts over several years for me to come to a place where I liked them. I had tried them twice before and I had the same thing with my fingers cramping. And for me, it's the way that I hold them for whatever reason, it's like my middle knuckle through my pinky knuckle right in there is mm -hmm. what cramps up. I think mm -hmm. it's from holding, you know, yeah, kind of hold those fingers up and out of the way. Mm -hmm. And it cramped my hand like crazy. Um, and so I got rid of them. I was like, this is stupid. They hurt my hands. I'm not going to do it. And then at the beginning of quarantine in March, 2020, I had seen somebody raving about how much they loved them, but they said that it took a whole sock or two socks before they mm -hmm. really loved them. And I was like, okay, we're in quarantine for a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> This is my quarantine project. This is the thing I can do. I will give it a fair shake mm -hmm. and knit a pair of socks on nine inch cirques because I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything else. I can knit on them until my hands hurt and then put them down and mm -hmm. try again later. And it took me a full sock, like seriously, full women's size eight mm -hmm. sock before I was comfortable knitting with them. And by the time I finished the second sock, I was hooked. Mm. Um, but it took, it took serious determination for me to get that far with wanting to, um, wanting to make them work for me. Yeah, see the thing is you pick and knit too. I think it's easier for pickers and even if you throw your yarn like I do, I've, so that's what the Zoom call which I was on, there were some people saying, well, I throw and it's I love it them. And the thing is, the way I throw my yarn, I 
kind of do like the lever style knitting. Mm -hmm. So I prefer a long needle in my right hand, which I mm -hmm. rest against my palm. And those needles are so short, like even in regular circular needles, if the needle tip, which is, you know, basically the, this needle, if it's, yeah. if it's not long enough, uh, I have trouble with even magic loop basically. Yeah. I need this to be like a good five inches or longer and then I'm comfortable. And uh, with those nine inch circulars, I just go like, it's like this much. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, like two, How am I supposed inches. to hold this thing? <laughs> so I have, I have no way to like lever style knit with it. And uh, I have trouble with uh, 16 inch circulars as well because they do come with shorter tip sizes. Yeah. But I had gotten comfortable knitting the Musselberg hat, which I had shown last time. And uh, that, again, I was planning to use Magic Loop on that throughout. Yeah. But then I said, let me try the 16-inch needle. And it, it worked well when I knit the hat inside out. Um, so it's kind of hard to explain, but basically I was... I had turned the hat inside out. Mm -hmm. So I'm knitting on the side of the hat further away from me. It just yeah. it just gave me enough of leverage and enough of fabric to hold to do my liver style knitting that I do. Yeah, I do. I knit on the um, nine inch circs for socks, quote, normally with, you know, the right side of the knitting out. For the cup cozies, I had to knit them inside out as well because I was doing two-handed knitting. Um, and I did need that fabric underneath to kind of hold on to as well. So yeah. that might be what works for you. I I would recommend trying them with yeah. just straight stockinette yeah. and see how it goes and give yourself a sock before you throw them in the bin or just yeah. send them my way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what will happen eventually, I think. But yeah. other than that, I did finish a big project. Oh, yeah? I did this project. I finished the blanket. Yay! It's oh, all done. I love it so much. This was my podcast knitting project, and it's done. <laughs> so... It was so cool. Yeah, it used, uh, it completely used your two sets of uh, morphing minis mm -hmm. and uh, full scale of a worsted weight yarn, plus a little extra. So, okay. So, it's, it's a really good project for your morphing minis for sure. I, I, I held your yarn double. Yeah, I still really want to try that with mine for a booth sample. I think that that would be really cool. So let's see. I have one other finished project. That is, I finished my, I don't think I've shown them on the podcast. I finished my Sashiko Halloween cloths. They're both done. This is going to get all blown out, but... No, nice. That's so, so cool. So that's one. And then the other one is the same pattern, but on black. That's my favorite. I love how it turned out. And I got these from uh, Kimono Momo on Etsy. I will link below. So yeah. Just, I I picked these up. This was also beginning of quarantine project because back in March and we weren't, or April, we weren't going anywhere. And I was like, let me buy all of the things off of Etsy, all of the craft kits. So I um, got these and I've been working on them on and off since then. And since I finished them, where did I put my bag? I decided I needed to have another Sashiko project going. So I started my goldfish's cloth. Oh, that's so neat. Yeah. 
So I've still got quite a bit of work to do on it, but I have a tendency to go through phases with Sashiko where I'll spend like a week or so working on it and then I'll put it away for two months and mm -hmm. then the cycle repeats. And it's nice. It's when I want something real mindless, but quick progress. And talking about Sushiko, I attended this class this morning, which which wasn't uh, Sushiko, but it kind of reminds me of it, where uh, it's um, it's a particular kind of quilt making uh, known in India. Uh, it's called Kawandi, and uh, so the class was by Sujata Shah. She's an Indian who's based in San Francisco, I believe. And um, it involves doing quilting in the complete opposite way than our traditional quilting, which is kind of pretty neat because, you know, how we usually quilt out here in the West is we make a quilt top and then we add batting and then we add backing and then sew the whole thing together and put the binding on. Mm -hmm. um, these quilts actually start with the backing and the batting and uh, because of, uh, you know, the limited means of uh, the material and stuff these people had, uh, the size of the quilt was actually determined by the biggest piece of fabric they could get for the batting. Okay. So that essentially determined how big their quilt will be. And they would sometimes not even add batting in between. It's just layers of fabric sewn together. But you start attaching uh, so the, uh, the green in the center, that's my mm -hmm. batting, which is just a felt piece okay. and a flannel piece. Flannel. And, uh, and then I'm basically sewing in pieces around the edges and you start at the edges. So you're essentially you're doing kind of the binding first. Oh, okay. And then you kind of start adding pieces in the center and it's all done with the big stitches. Uh, means you can do it with whatever stitch size you're comfortable with, but it kind of reminded me of Sashiko, and this happened this morning. So it's, I'm kind of doing the next round, and as soon as you start finding gaps, you put a piece of fabric there, fold the edges in, and just keep sewing along, and you That's kind so of go cool. from the outside in. And, um, and the different layers of fabric, they kind of create a batting in itself. Yeah. They necessarily don't even need a batting, essentially. Um, yeah, it's a very cool technique. And uh, so it, I, I kind of had an idea what it was, but it was fun to join the class, learn about the history. And even though it's, you know, based in India, and I've seen these quilts in India, uh, it's, uh, there's just so much in India that it, just because I'm an Indian, that doesn't mean I know everything about India. <laughs> India is kind of a big place. It is. <laughs> So it was a very educational workshop and uh, she is the root connection on Instagram and we'll put a link down below for uh, her classes and stuff. Pretty, pretty neat. I highly recommend. Awesome. And her book too. She has a book out called Cultural Quilt or so something like that. So pretty neat woman. And uh, did he do any spinning? Did I do any spinning? No, but I got some fiber in. You want to see my new pretties? Yes, always. Well, this is your fault because last week we were chatting, earlier this week we were chatting, and Sean's like, did you see Edgewood's <laughs> oh, <I> <laughs> new <laughs> sparkle fiber? And I was like, what? I was like, Man. if I'm not buying it, somebody needs to buy it. <laughs> And did then you, I'll be like, Don, it all sold out. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever end up getting any? No, I didn't. I See, was being good. You said that, and within 15 minutes, I had placed my order. <laughs> this is Space Traveler 2 by oh, Edgewood Gardens. It's a lovely bluish purple. I like that. And it has the sparkle in it. It's a it's 70% merino. 30% Stellina, so it has mm -hmm. all of the sparkle. I am yeah, the sparkle doesn't this. show much in the pictures in the website. Yeah. It was just like, since I knew it was there because she said it's there. But, but it picks up nicely on the camera. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's soft and it had, it's, uh, what is, it's like a humbug base. What is that called? It's like a variegated mixed mm -hmm. base. So you can see yeah. the stripes of brown through it too. I think it's yeah. going to be a really interesting spin. Yeah. But as with all of my purchases from Edgewood, uh -huh. you know, her fiber is such a reasonable price uh -huh. and she's local. And so the shipping is really reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> so that Favorite wasn't nine. the <laughs> only thing <laughs> that came home with me. This is called Party Favors. Oh. And it's Cheviot. Oh my goodness, I didn't even see that in the shop. Isn't that fun? Well, oh, that'll make such cool it. socks. Um, I showed, I, I think it was Amanda, and she was like, it looks like Halloween. It does. And it does. It looks like Halloween without the black, which makes me very happy and explains why I was drawn to it, because these aren't typically my colors, mm -hmm. but it looks like treats. It does look like treats. It looks like candy. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't have any idea how the heck I'm going to spin it, but I think it will, I will attempt it for socks. I have still mm -hmm. yet to actually spin a true fingering weight sock yarn. Everything is either sport weight or lace weight. Um, so I'm going to try for fingering weight with it. And I think I will probably chain ply this one. Yeah. Because I think the colors will get really muddy. Yeah. If I blend them together. So then it's a matter of how I'm going to split it to chain split that. it to do it. But I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I did um uh, a pair of sock spin uh earlier in the summer. And that was kind of you know painted roving in rainbow colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, in order to get the rainbow stripes in it, uh, like you kind of know you get a pair from the whole braid, right? Yeah. So you kind of can split it so that in four ways, so that you'll get the entire repeat of the braid uh, for, you know, once in the foot and mm -hmm. once in the leg and once in the foot and once in the leg of the other yeah. one. So basically, if you split it four ways, then you know that that's the way your sock is going to stripe. Yeah. So if you find that that color repeat is too big and you want your color striping to happen faster, then you mm -hmm. can split it further yeah. and have shorter. So it's it it requires some thinking. It's not very straightforward. I'm like, oh, just spin it and chain ply. Yeah, yeah but, I'm really going to have to open it up and take a look at it. Yeah, and I post uh, the picture of my socks here. Uh, I got them pretty close to matching yeah, uh, those two socks. And that was um, Mohair and BFL blend by Crafty Jacks. And very warm socks. I couldn't wear them in the summer, but I'm looking forward to the winter and wearing them. It looks like as all of my stuff falls. <laughs> Stay, stay. Okay, fine. Don't stay. Move over here. It looks like they have, I mean, this purple strip is longer, yeah. but there's shorter color bursts here. I'm probably not going to want to rip it down too much. Otherwise, I'm going to lose some of these shorter bits. Yeah, you will. But, uh, you know, when you're spinning those shorter bits also, you know, they're they can have a nice just thin stripe in between. Yeah. Uh, plus when you actually lay out the entire braid and yeah. see where that turning point is, maybe you can break it at all the turning points so that mm -hmm. the purple doesn't uh, have such long repeats. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to and, play around with it. Yeah. It Some smells planning. like sheep. That's it really cool. does. It smells good. So... I did do spinning would've... though. You got spinning food, but I do do spinning. But I still have more spinning food, Sharon. Oh, okay. you got more. <laughs> yes, I did. Don't shame me. What What did I do by <laughs> sending you to a shop? <laughs> I got I got bat food. Oh my! 
Oh, that is so neat. Yes, I saw she was selling those packages too. I will. So I got, I'm only going to open one of these, but I got a, a blue green one. Mm -hmm. I got another blue green one. Yeah. And I got a hot pink one, pink and purple. That's neat. And it has, each of them are two ounces. And it was a really reasonable price for two yeah. ounces. Um, and it has like sparkly, mm -hmm. nylon y sparkle yeah. in it. And more sparkly Rolling nylon stuff yeah. that is now going to be all over my desk. Yeah, some, that stuff spreads everywhere. Some blended roving. Mm -hmm. Different shades of what I assume is merino. Mm. It just says that it's, you know, a mix of wool. Merino and other wool, silk and nylon. Um, but all kinds of fun bits that I'm planning on using on my blending board. And there's this little braid with fiber in there too. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with these. I'm not yeah, sure when. She, she has a good sense of color. So um, not surprised, you know, she'll make really good bundles. With yeah. Those things. Okay. Well, I'm putting my stuff away. What did you do for spinning? I finished a big project, big spinning project. Uh, big in the sense, this is, mm, is it my biggest? No, I've spun more for a single project before, but this is my uh, first uh, yarn baby that I made on the Daedalus uh, Magpie wheel. And it's a big one pound baby. Oh, let me see. There it is. That's all oh, the squishiness wow. it is. And it's it's super soft. And it's so huge. But and you know, you think one pound that it's a lot, but it's it feels like it's just air in here. <laughs> it's so soft. And uh, this was actually a commission piece that I've spun for someone. And uh, they were going uh, we're planning to send it off to them today, but uh, it'll happen next week, I guess. I said, I need to have it on the podcast. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was a really fun project. I, uh, the bat I used for that is from Frost Yarn. I had uh, purchased that uh, maybe a year or two back and I was holding it like forever. And I was like, it has to be the perfect project, it has to be the perfect project, but I just didn't know what I would make with it. Yeah. And so eventually, you know, this friend of mine who has purchased a lot of my art yarns, she really likes blues and purples. So, and she's purchased several of my other art yarns and she's like, don't you have anything else in blue and purple? I'm like, no, I've not spun anything else in blue and purple. <laughs> so then... I showed her these two bats and she's like, yes. I'm like, but that's going to be a lot of yardage. And she's like, yeah, you don't have enough yardage in your art. Yards. I want a lot of yardage. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. These, so these were two five ounce bats each. So that's 10 ounces of fiber. Wow. And because I core spun it, it adds, you know, more weight because of the core. Hence, mm -hmm. it's a one pound uh, yarn. And uh, I still haven't measured the yardage because it's just so huge. <laughs> I know it's going to be enough for the scarf that she wants to make, maybe two scarves that she wants to make. Oh, that's great. Uh, so I think it'll be enough, but I still need to measure the yardage. And it was a fun spin. So yeah, I did the core spinning on the Daedalus Magpie. And uh, I also applied it on it. And I knew I wouldn't fit it because the yeah. 10 ounce core spun was compact on the big art flyer and uh, I think I'd shown a picture last time of it completely packed up yeah and uh, now it's like you know applying it I've managed to fit 
most of it, like around 13 ounces of it. The remaining three ounces, I had to make another mini skein out of it. But it's it's still, it packs up and it went by quick. The core spinning and the mm -hmm. plying, especially the plying, the plying, I got it all done in like one day, one sitting. That's kind of nice about having an e-spinner. There's no treadling involved. Yep. Less exercise. You can just sit down and do it. Yeah. That's you great. just have to hold the things <laughs> <laughs> and just spin it. Well, while you were talking, I frogged my sock. I got off at some point and had one increase on one side of my sock and not on the other. And this is why when you finish your sock, you should start the other one right away and maybe not do it while you're doing a podcast. Yes. Oh, Casper is here to greet us. Is he greeting us or is he greeting the lawn guy? The lawn guy. So did you finish anything else? No. <laughs> no. I didn't. No. I mean, what? I did serious shopping and I did cup cozies and sashiko. How much more do you want me to finish? Works in progress though. Oh. I made progress on things. Is that okay? That's, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll settle with that. We'll settle for that. Yeah. Casper's so excited today. Yeah, he's like, you're not recording today. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to leave this in here because I'm, I'm going to be so sick and tired of editing this episode. So apologies to everyone for all the cuts in between. <laughs> Deal with the bargain. We've had major background sound issues today. <laughs> today yeah. I'm tired of muting myself. Nancy's rebooting her computer. And it's just been going nuts today. That's all good. All right. So this is mid clue two of Stephen West's Shawlography. Mm. So if you are worried about spoilers, skip forward a little bit. Um, but Clue 4 came out today, so I doubt anybody's worried about spoilers at this point. But da -ba -da. Wow, that's so neat. I don't remember where I was. Uh, you had podcast. finished uh, you had finished, I think I finished the, the loops. loops. Yeah. Yeah. So I've since added this sort of stripey plaid-ish portion. Yeah. Mm -hmm these green mini welts which mm -hmm. were a pain in the butt yeah they're adorable and i think mm -hmm. they were worth the effort and they're totally they're squishy mm -hmm. um but they're a pain in the butt <laughs> there, there is there are a lot of pain in the butt things in this thing but the, the results are Pretty so far, the results have been really spectacular. Yeah. And I love, look at the triangle section. That's what I'm working on now. Oh, wow. That's There's, really neat. The way that it's made reminds me, it's like mosaic knitting. So mm -hmm. you're only working with one color way at a time. Yeah. But there are gaps that you skip that are really big. So it still kind of feels like stranded color work. It's mm -hmm. weird. Um, I'm enjoying knitting this por portion. Yeah. Portion. So, so for clue two all i have left but casper's so excited um all i have left is another repeat of these black triangles and then i think it's orange bobbles is going to be the next section and then clues three and four so there's still a lot of shawl that has to happen have you yeah. seen the Clue 4 spoilers yes, that came I out have. today? I have, yes. and it looks pretty amazing. It's a really neat shawl. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. Yeah, um, I want to knit it. I know I, it will be a shawl that I will knit. Yeah. After now seeing, I, mean, I, I kind of, once it started itself, I kind of knew I wanted to knit this one. It didn't feel like it was going to go too crazy or anything too. So I was like, yes, I want to get this one. But, it, uh, it went texturally crazy. 
Yeah, but, I'll, because it's textured and the colors and everything, I think it's going to work out really well. Yeah. I, I'm excited to see what you do with yours when you get there. I, I hope I have the motivation since it has so many troublesome sections like which require that motivation part that do it. I, I really wonder if there is no net along going on, whether I'll actually do well, that. I guarantee that I will still be knitting mine when you start yours. Um, so there will be that. We'll still have some knit along portion. And the portion, the each section of pattern, like clue one, clue two, clue three, clue four, each of those are broken down into a few sections. Sections, yeah. Which, it's more complicated than potato chip knitting. Mm -hmm. there, there isn't that... I've done this little bit. I want to keep going. I want to keep going. I want to keep going. That's mm -hmm. sort of there, but it's like, oh, here's this stupid welts challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. And then you spend a day working on the welts and you oh. accomplish it and you feel really good. And then you're like, okay, I did that part. Now I'm going to go work on my sashiko for a little bit because that <laughs> broke my brain. And then you're like, okay, I'm ready for my next challenge. What's my next challenge? Oh, yeah. slip stitch triangles. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, his patterns are fun because you just learn something new every time. Yeah. Or you might know how to do it. You just are kind of forced to do <laughs> A lot of it or enough of it to know that hey i can do that <laughs> i can i can confidently do this now yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so i've got one final work in progress i made significant progress on my diamond painting cat it's not done it is not going to be done in time for halloween that's okay i'm still really happy with how far i've gotten Oh, wow. That's not much. You could. No, it's not much. You could push through. <laughs> I could, but I need to dye yarn tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So I still have um, some background up here that needs mm -hmm. to get done. Just about this whole section is solid black. All black. Okay. And then some background here. I had two Zooms this week where all that I did the whole Zoom was, was black. work on the black. <laughs> yeah. Because that was really super boring. And I figured, well, if I'm chatting with friends, I won't care as much that I'm just doing one color. So yeah, I'm, it would be really nice if it would be finished the next time we record. Don't hold your breath for that. <laughs> I don't know that that's going to happen. But it shouldn't be too much longer. Um, we'll say that my goal is to finish it by my birthday. How about that? It gives me a couple weeks. Yeah, that's a good gift for yourself. Gift to myself, yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's all of my things. Um, I haven't really made any notable progress on my baby blanket. So that still looks like a partially knit striped baby blanket. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Do you have anything else? Yeah, I did make, uh, I did some actual quilting quilting. Uh, quilting Yeah, I have, I finished the, one of my small, small, you know, what, 20 inch by 20 inch quilt tops. I quilted it and turned it into a pillow. I think I sent you pictures of that. I'll post yeah. one picture in here. Uh, so everyone can admire them, but it's I I I love how that came out. Um, it uh, the quilting lines I made like baby quilting lines, so okay. it's like you know uh, a little bit fun out there because none of the piecing was straight up, so it was kind of nice to have some baby quilting lines going, and I think it came together really nice, and it gives me confidence to do the bigger quilt tops that I've done. Awesome. So I will tackle them next. And uh, the other thing on the quilting front that I'm working on is that triangle quilt. 
Yeah. And that has been oh, a challenge, a big challenge. Um, as far as size and everything is concerned, I'll insert pictures here so everyone can see. Uh, uh, I can put them straight up and sideways, the triangles, and they fit in a certain way. But I really like them on point so they kind of go like diagonal and crazy. And the only thing is with making them on point and on diagonal, I have to put these set in triangles on the side. Yeah. And for that, then I need to make these triangle shaped blocks out of these triangle shaped units. It's so hard to explain because I'm not making a block. I'm making, I'm just making weird shapes out of weird shapes. And I don't want to put just a plain fabric there because then it looks like, oh, I was just filling in the gaps. Yeah. And is, it, is it reasonable to make a, a regular block and just cut it in half? Uh, yes and no, but because they are all the triangle spaces, since this is all improv quilted, right? Yeah. The, the triangle spaces in each section is very different. It's yeah. like a different shape triangle. Some of them are big, some of them are small. Okay, uh, gotcha. And then the other thing is that um, I don't want to chop off any of my perpendicular triangles on the edge. Okay. You know, I kind of want them all floating in the middle of the quilt. Yeah. Uh, because once they're cut off, they kind of look very weird. So I'm like, no, it needs to be a whole triangle. So it needs to have a plain piece of fabric on the edge. Yeah. Um, so that is one struggle. The other bigger struggle with that is uh, I'm running out of the background fabric. Mm. So I have to very carefully use up whatever I have to make sure I have enough for all the set in triangles I need to put in. The point where I'm at is I'm adding those set in triangles around the edges and the problem is I'm running out of the background fabric. So I'm adding new fabrics in, which still kind of go with the rest of the quilt, mm -hmm. but they are, they are not used anywhere else in the quilt. So I kind of want to make sure that I at least distribute them around the whole yeah. quilt. So it looks a little intentional, but I've already made around half of the triangles without those fabrics in. Huh. So it's, you know, if it looks off, it looks off. It's, that's, that's also one of the cool things about improv is like, I'm not too concerned about the fact that, oh, there'll be like, you know, fabrics in that, corner triangle which are not used in the rest of the quilt yeah. and people might be able to see but it also kind of reflects as to how this quilt was made yeah. it was made with a certain plan and then the plans changed and then I ran out of fabric and this is what happened and hopefully it came out to be something cool but it captured that story in the quilt yeah you does. know if I had followed a pattern and I had purchased all the fabric I needed and had used all the fabric I needed and all the fabric would have matched and everything. I think it wouldn't have told that story at all. You know, yeah. this way it'll be, if there is that extra fabric added, it'll just say that, oh yeah, looks like he ran out of fabric or, oh, he planned that out so cool so that he could have some different fabrics out there. <laughs> like nobody will know the real story, but yeah. there will be a story if you observe carefully. So it's, uh, and it's like going to be always, a big size quilt. Like always, it's an interesting puzzle to solve. Yeah, and and I think that's what I kind of like about the improv quilting that it's it's so much more problem solving too. Yeah. Um, and this is getting to be more of a problem solving because this is going to be one of the largest quilts I've made so far. Yeah. It's bigger than the one behind me. This is a twin size. Uh, this is going to be slightly bigger than that. This is going to be a large twin size. And it's not fitting on my design wall. 
um uh, and i like tried putting it on the floor but because it's on point and everything is wonky it really doesn't help me straighten things out and it's not eventually going to be a straight edge quilt either i kind of the more i'm looking at it wonky i'm kind of liking it too oh, so good. i might have wonky edges to it as well but i still kind of want to have some sort of a rectangular shape so yeah but i need that visual space to stand far back to see that you know wonky edge too it's like sometimes i feel i'm making a parallelogram and i'm like oh it's all shifting at an angle <laughs> why is that happening yeah so. well can you put it can you put it on the floor in your entryway and go up the stairs and look at that or is that still too much of an angle uh it no that would be fine but it's bigger than an entryway for one thing oh, okay and plus the the wall on the stairs would block the view yeah um it's like i kind of wanted to just get on top of my roof and look at it i want a birds eye view of that quilt but i cannot get that birds eye view anywhere so. yeah well next thing we know you're going to be suspended from the ceiling like mission impossible yeah. trying to get a view <laughs> of your quilt yeah i'm going like oh that size triangle needs to fit right there let me go to the, my sewing machine and i would just fly to my sewing machine yes so that piece and then fit it in. I like this. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh that's in progress. And I did uh I was working in the studio and I need to do a glaze firing this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna have a lot of different pieces this time. I have I have no mugs. Oh wow. Well, no, no, I'm lying. I do have a few mugs, but they are all pre-orders. So there's nothing going to be, all the mugs, you know, are not going to be listed. Whatever is there on the on my website is there. But I'm going to have um, oil bottles and uh, honey pots. Oh, neat. That's the majority stuff that's going in the kiln. And uh, that's going to get glazed this weekend and hopefully on Monday. Uh, I'll be able to do the update. That'll be neat. Yeah. I'm excited to see, I always really like your oil bottles and I'm curious to see the range of honey pots you made this time. Oh, I've made many because some are pre-orders and the success rate of the lids fitting on them is usually not the best. Like sometimes they all work perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll be like, oh, I just need to make two for somebody's order. So I'll make two and both of them don't fit. So yeah. I need to make four and then all four survive and then it's fine. So mm -hmm. I've made close to like 16 or 18 oh, of wow. them. So someone somewhere, they should all fit at least for the pre-orders and for the extra pieces too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, tomorrow, my dad's coming over to help me dye some yarn. I'm behind on movie night, but I'm going to get that done, which I'm very excited about. The October movie night was Zombie Land, and I have the perfect colorway in mind. I'm so oh, excited man. about it. Um, so I need to make that happen. I'm dyeing up some more dumpster fire for Stilly River okay. Yarns. That's her exclusive colorway so that'll be in at stilly river yarns in stanwood washington sometime next week um and i love that name though <laughs> dumpster fire yeah it's it's a good one uh and let's see i have a couple of died on demand orders that i'm going to be doing so just getting caught up on stuff, you know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and I should mention that November's movie night, if anybody is interested, because I'm planning on dying that earlier in the month next month. So get in on it while you can, is going to be Coco from Oh, and I'm getting that one. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. And because I'm the one getting it, she has to be on time otherwise. She's going to hear from me. 
Yeah, I'll just <laughs> ignore you. It's fine. I know you've been waiting for months for Coco. Exactly. I'm like, yeah, I'm not signed for every month, but I'm like, I looked at your movie list and I loved the movie Coco so much. I watched it twice back to back. So wow. I'm like, no, I really, I want that yarn. And I'm looking forward to see what you land up doing with it. Like which character you pick or what about the movie you pick, or I don't know what it's going to be. It's, it's that excitement which is like i want to see what you do with coco i'm excited to see what i do with coco too i've only yeah. seen it once <laughs> i and i i remember bits and parts of it i want to watch it again so we'll see yeah yeah that's that should be a thing that i watch this weekend yeah. get start start rolling that around in the brain pan see what i come up with yeah. so well, I think that about wraps it up, right? Yeah, with all the barking and the buzzing sounds and all the craziness and the crazy edits, this one is going to be so much fun. Uh, I think we should wrap it up before I have to do more edits on it. <laughs> so. Sounds like a good plan. So yeah, if uh, you have any comments, uh, you know, you enjoy watching this podcast, uh, press that like button. Uh subscribe to our podcast, share it with friends, and tell them how funny we are, and how badly edit our post- podcast is, and how <laughs> the dog keeps barking in between, and you cannot hear a thing that they're saying. Share everything about it. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Bye. Bye.